Yo, what up guys? Welcome to this new video. As we are still in this COVID pandemic, uh, flying is still something we do lesser than normal. But yet still, there are a lot of people who haven't even flown yet. And for those people, we will show you today what things you need to know when you go flying. So hereby we present the top 10 first time flying tips when you go for the flying for the first time. Number 10. In-flight entertainment. The difference between budget and legacy carriers is also quite stark when it comes to in-flight entertainment. If you're traveling on an airline like Spirit, Interjet or Ryanair, you should not expect any in-flight entertainment options. That's also true on many domestic carriers in the United States. Many of those airlines, like American Airlines, are turning to branded apps on your phone or tablet, allowing you to use in-flight Wi-Fi to stream entertainment. Most long-haul international flights will have in-seat entertainment options, though quality varies. You shouldn't expect access to in-seat USB charging ports on every flight either. Availability is usually indicated when you see a small lightning bolt next to the flight when booking. Number 9. The movements of the plane. Airplanes don't travel in a straight line. Flight patterns in and out of airports often demand that pilots circle the destination below one, two or more times as they descend in order to ease landing and keep enough space between arriving and departing flights. In order to execute this maneuver, the plane is going to tilt sharply which often alarms passengers, whether they are seasoned or on their first flight. Rest assured, the plane is not falling out of the sky, but is executing movements for which it was engineered. Number 8. Motion Sickness Motion sickness isn't a universal affliction, and people who experience it during one form of transportation like boats or cars won't necessarily feel it across all types of transportation. The sensation of flying isn't the same as being in a boat or in a car on a twisting turning road, but there are air sickness bags in the seat pockets of every flight for a reason. Some people can't handle it. With that in mind, you should come armed with motion sickness pills like Dramamine, which also have sedative effects. Seats at the back of the plane do pick up more motion than those at the front, so you may want to choose a low numbered row or a seat near the bathroom. Number 7. Being nervous. Here's an insider secret from those of us who fly all the time. We still get nervous in the air. There's nothing we can tell you that will keep you from becoming anxious, but we have some tricks that might help. First off, do not research airplane horror stories in online forums ahead of time. You're not doing yourself any favors by seeking out the mishaps that can occur while flying. Instead, work on some calming strategies like deep breathing. We suggest app like Breathe to Relax, which can help regulate this. Curated playlists and engaging reading material can help as well. If all else fails, there are both over-the-counter and prescription medications that can help you manage extreme cases of anxiety. Number 6. Sitting with travel partners. There's a bit of a catch when it comes to booking flights. You'll often see cheaper fares when searching for one passenger versus two people or more. If your ultimate goal is to save money and you don't care about sitting together, book separately. However, if you're hoping to have side-by-side -side seats, you must book your flights as one purchase. Doing so means you're far more likely to be placed together. For groups of more than two, this won't always be the case, and couples are sometimes placed across the aisle from one another. In addition to booking your seats as a single purchase, you should book as early as possible and potentially also shell out extra money to select your seats. If you're planning on sweet-talking the airline crew on the ground, you're often going to be out of luck. Number 5. Carry-on luggage. You might think that the bag you bought, supposedly approved by the TCA as a carry-on, will be usable on every airline. Sadly, that's not the case. Each airline has a different set of sizes that they allow from carry-ons. This is compounded by the fact that each airline also sets different weight limits for those carry-ons. Keep in mind that your personal item, your backpack or purse, usually is often included in the total weight you are allowed to carry on. If you carry on and personal items are overweight, expect to pay extra. Even if you make a true check-in with your carry-on, there's a chance you may be asked to check it at the gate, depending on flight capacity. Number 4. Paying for your seat. 
These days, airlines are trying to maximize profits at every turn. That includes one standard service like choosing your own seat. Most budget and even major domestic carriers now charge a fee if you want to select your preferred seat. If you're flying for the first time, a window seat can be very cool, as you'll get a bird's eye view of the world. Alternatively, an aisle seat gives you the freedom to get up and use the restroom or stretch as often as you'd like. Shelling out cash to select your seat also prevents you from being struck in a dread middle seat. Number 3. Free in-flight food Once upon a time, anyone stepping onto an airplane could expect a variety of services and perks, including in-flight meals. That's a thing of the past. If you're flying domestically, you aren't going to get a free meal in economy class. Most airlines provide one round of free snacks and non-alcoholic beverages, though budget airlines like Spirit, Allegiant and Frontier do not. International long-haul flights generally include a round of snacks, alcoholic beverages and at least one meal, though again, if you're flying a budget airline like Norwegian, AirAsia or Interjet, or have chosen an economy fare on a non-budget carrier, you can expect to shell out for food and beverages. That being said, it's best to bring plenty of snacks and water regardless. Number 2. Arriving at the airport While some people stroll up to the airport 30 minutes before their plane's departure, you should adhere to the recommended arrival times that airlines provide. As a refresher, that's 60 minutes if you've checked into a domestic flight online and aren't checking bags, 90 minutes for a domestic flight in which you are checking bags and 2 hours for international travelers departing from their home country. If you're returning home from a foreign country, allow yourself 3 hours in case of any holdups at border control. Lines for security at the busiest airports in the United States and Europe can be horrible. In the US, you can expect the longest security lines at LAX, all New York City area airports, Dallas Fort Worth, O'Hare and Miami. And number 1. Name on your tickets. This may sound like a no-brainer, but if the names on your ticket and passport or government issued ID don't match, you're going to have a problem. When you purchase your ticket online, make sure you are entering it exactly as it's written on the document you'll be using to travel. Additionally, if you've purchased security clearance programs like TSA, PreCheck or Global Entry, make sure to enter your known travel number at the time of booking, otherwise you may be forbidden from using those expedited lines upon arriving at the airport. And here we want to end the video. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please press the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified for new videos. And we hope to see you next week. Bye bye!